Friends. It was a super sunny day, and Dolly the ladybird sat staring out of the window. I'm going to eat breakfast, she thought, and then I'll go for a walk in the meadow. She decided to take her wheelbarrow with her. I wonder if I'll find something interesting to take home in my wheelbarrow, she thought to herself. Goodness me, said Dolly. What a lovely red cherry. That's just perfect for my lunch. She tried to lift the cherry into her wheelbarrow, but it was far too heavy. Too heavy for one little ladybird. Just then, <laughs> Berry the snail appeared. Why the sad face, ladybird? asked Berry. I can't lift this cherry into my wheelbarrow, Dolly replied. Don't cry, I'll help you, Berry said with a smile. And the two of them picked the cherry up with no trouble at all. Dolly set straight off home with the juicy cherry. Now it was Berry who looked sad. Don't you want to share the cherry with me? The snail said and stamped his little foot. I did help you. But I found it first, Dolly snapped. You're not having any, it's mine. Berry was very upset. The two of them started to fight over the cherry. It's mine, it's mine, shouted Dolly. That's not fair, Berry shouted back. They pushed and pulled the cherry until it split in two. Berry and Dolly plopped to the ground. They were very surprised when a green grub crawled out of the cherry. What have you done to my cherry? He grumbled. That cherry was my home. Oh, don't look so upset, the grub said. I know where we can find plenty more. You can eat cherries while I find a new home for myself. Dolly helped the grub into her wheelbarrow and they all set off to look for the cherry tree. When they arrived, they found the ground around the cherry tree was covered in ripe red fruit. Berry and Dolly jumped for joy. The grub fell fast asleep while Berry and Dolly munched away on fresh cherries and the time soon flew by. It was getting late, so they decided to go home, but this time with two cherries. One for Dolly and one for Berry. The sun was setting by the time they reached Berry's house. They took his cherry out of the wheelbarrow and said goodbye. Berry went inside and waved to Dolly from the window. Berry soon fell fast asleep after such an exciting day. The little snail dreamt about playing in cherries with Dolly and eating until their tummies were full. Then Dolly got back home and went straight to bed. From that day on, Berry and Dolly were the best of friends. The Water Snail Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar were sitting around in the meadow. 
I wish I had a cousin too, a distant snail relative. Berry sighed. But you've got a sort of cousin, Berry. The water snail is a kind of snail, Flutter the butterfly said. Really? Berry jumped to his feet with a grin. Where does this water snail live? Nowhere. I don't think there's such a thing as a water snail. Oh, yes, there is. I know where he lives. He's got a little house deep down in the round pond on the other side of the forest. You're talking nonsense, the bee said. Why don't we go down to the round pond to see for ourselves? Come with me. I'll take you, Hedgehog Harry told his friends. We can be there before it gets dark. Hooray, Berry whooped. I'll bring the air tank so we can swim down to the bottom of the pond. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar hopped into the hedgehog cart and set out for the round pond. It was late in the evening by the time they finally caught sight of the pond. The cart's running away, the little bee shouted, but it was already too late. The hedgehog cart rolled right into the water. It's too late to do anything today. Let's go to bed, and tomorrow you can all swim down to the bottom of the pond. I'm sure you'll find the cart, Harry comforted them. Berry woke up bright and early the next morning. Look, the water lily has opened its petals and there's someone standing on its leaf and he's waving at us. Who are you? Hello, everybody. My name's Sam Snail and I live deep down at the bottom of the round pond. See, Balthazar, water snails do exist after all. I've got my own proper cousin now. Sam Snail didn't understand why Berry was so happy to see him. But then Dolly told him why they had come. I'm so happy to meet you, Cousin Berry, the water snail said. Would you help us find our cart that rolled into the water, Sam? Flutter asked. I'd be delighted. Follow me, the water snail said. So the four friends slipped into their swimming costumes and swam all the way down to the bottom of the pond. This is where I live, Sam Snail announced with pride. <laughs> they heard a frightening hissing sound that scared Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar who hid behind the house. Don't be scared, it's my friend the water snake. Water snake, have you seen a cart at the bottom of the pond by any chance? Hang on to me and I'll take you there. There it is. The water snake hissed. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar and Flutter were happy they'd found it. You did it, said Harry. He was so happy to see his little friends again. Let's go for a trip on the pond, Sam Snail suggested. They all sat on the lily pad and Sam Snail started rowing. It's time we were going, Dolly said when it began to get dark. Oh, let's stay a little longer, Berry pleaded. We'll come again another day. Flutter reassured the little snail. Harry Hedgehog was already waiting for them. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar all said goodbye to Sam Snail and headed for home. The next day, Berry and Dolly both painted colourful pictures of their distant cousins. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Flutter goes skiing. On a winter day, Iris the Ice Beetle invited all her friends to go skiing. Has everyone got skis? she asked. I haven't, said Berry. And I haven't, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl joined in. Neither have I, Flutter the Butterfly added. Then let's make some skis for you. It isn't hard, Iris said with a smile. The friends all joined in. 
They sawed and sanded thin planks of wood, fixed foot straps to them and made poles for everyone. And the skis were finished by lunchtime. They all walked up the hill together. When they got to the top, they strapped on their skis and put on their ski helmets. Then Iris asked, Does everyone know how to ski? I can teach anyone who doesn't. They all nodded except for Flutter. The little butterfly girl didn't know how to ski, but she didn't say anything. It can't be all that hard. I'll soon get the hang of it, she thought to herself. She only dared whisper the truth to the green grub. Berry was the first to go. Whoopee! He shouted with a broad grin as he sped down the snowy hillside. Dolly came after Berry, and then Balthazar, and then the others. Flutter was the last one to set off. She took a deep breath and pushed herself off. The only problem was she didn't know how to stop. She carried on skiing over the next hill and then the hill after that until she had skied a very long way away from the others. The little butterfly girl only stopped when she fell over into a big pile of snow. It was a while before the others realised that Flutter was missing. Flutter doesn't know how to ski, the green grub eventually told them. She can't ski, they all asked in surprise. This was her first time. She was very nervous, but she didn't dare to mention it. Oh, I'm frightened that something terrible has happened to her. The friends set off to search for Flutter. Dr. Owl was flying past, and he spotted Flutter in the snow below. Flutter, what happened to you? he asked. I couldn't stop, and I fell over in the snow. I really hurt myself. I thought I'd never be able to stop. I don't want to ski again, Flutter sobbed. Dr. Owl felt very sorry for the little butterfly girl, so he put her on his back and took her to his house. I'll bandage you up, and then I'll take you to Iris's house. I'm sure the others will be looking for you, Dr. Owl said in a reassuring voice. The little friends frantically searched around, but they couldn't find Flutter anywhere. They walked sadly back to Iris's house. But Flutter was waiting for them when they arrived. They were overjoyed. Hooray! Are you all right, Flutter? Tell us what happened to you, Dolly told her. Flutter told them the whole story from beginning to end. So you don't know how to ski, Iris asked in surprise. I'll teach you. You'll soon learn how to turn and stop, and you'll be able to ski down even the steepest hills. Thank you, the butterfly girl said with a smile. Iris started to teach Flutter to ski the very next morning. By the end of the first day, the little butterfly girl could ski down small hills and stop safely at the bottom. Look! Flutter can ski! This calls for a celebration! Stanley shouted. And he started to play a tune on the icicles. The others sang and danced around the happy little butterfly. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Kite Barry the snail was still asleep when Dolly the ladybird knocked on his window. Good morning, Barry. Let's make a kite. Dolly drew a kite, and Berry cut it out. They decorated it with colourful ribbons, and then they tied it to a long piece of string. Let's see if it flies, Dolly said. They took each other's hand and set off to fly their kite. But no matter how hard the two of them tried, the kite just wouldn't fly. Our 
climb up this tree and try it from there. Maybe then it'll fly, Dolly explained. But the kite just fell to the ground again. All of a sudden, the wind blew up and carried the kite away and took Dolly with it. Berry! Help! Berry climbed up the tree and grabbed Dolly's feet. But he couldn't pull her back, so now the two of them were flying. Balthazar the bee flew by. He caught hold of Berry's feet, but he couldn't pull the kite back either. So now the three of them were flying. Eddie the potato beetle was sitting on top of a pine tree. He caught Balthazar's feet. So now the four of them were flying. Leapy, help! Balthazar cried to the grasshopper, who was just hopping by. Leapy caught Eddie's feet, so now the five of them were flying. The wind got stronger and stronger. Flutter the butterfly flew by. She caught Leapy's feet, so now the six of them were flying. Stanley the stag beetle and Zephyr the dragonfly looked at their friends in despair. The kite got tangled in the top of a tall tree and they landed in the treetops. The wind died down and the sun came out. Berry gave the ladybird a worried look. Dolly, I can't fly. How am I going to get down from here? Don't worry, Berry. I'm sure we'll think of something. I know what to do. Jump into this blanket, Berry. Don't be afraid. You won't hurt yourself. Berry jumped down into the blanket and bounced back up in the air. Look at me. This is fun. We want to try, the others shouted. The little friends jumped up and down on the blanket until it got dark. Long after they were all in bed asleep, the wind blew up again and carried the kite far, far away. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Harry Hedgehog's birthday. One summer morning, Berry the snail, Dolly the ladybird and their forest friends were playing in the meadow. They were taking turns on the leaf swing. It must be so much fun to play on that swing. And it's a shame I'm too heavy for it, Harry Hedgehog sighed. His friends didn't know what to say. It's Harry Hedgehog's 10th birthday next week, the ladybird said. He'll be 10 years old. The little snail nodded. What do you think he'd like for his birthday? I know! Balthazar exclaimed and jumped to his feet. A swing! That's a super idea! Let's make a big swing for Harry! Dolly said enthusiastically. The little friends got to work immediately. They brought a saw, a hammer, nails and screws and searched for some strong branches. They tied the swing to thick wooden poles with very strong string. When the swing was ready, they all went to Balthazar's house to bake a cake. They cracked eggs and stirred the butter. The mixer whirred away and wooden spoons clattered in bowls. 
The little bee's kitchen was soon filled with delicious smells. They decorated the cake all over with cherries, raisins and walnuts. Let's put candles on it, Flutter said. Yes, ten candles, Dolly nodded. Let's write a letter to Harry, Berry said. Dear Harry, please come to Balthazar's house at lunchtime. We'll all see you there. Can you take it to Harry, please? Berry asked. But don't say a word about the cake and the swing, Dolly shouted after him. Balthazar and Stanley put the cake on a round table and carried it out of the house. The little ants were playing hide and seek and suddenly the smallest ant ran right into the table. <coughs> you tip the table over! The cake's ruined! Balthazar moaned. The cake? What are we going to do now? Dolly sobbed. Harry Hedgehog will be here any minute and he won't have a cake. The little ants felt very sorry for what they'd done, but one of them had an idea. Let's gather lots of fruit and berries and build a big pile. It'll be almost like a cake, won't it? That's a good idea, Stanley said. I know Harry loves fruit. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, Stanley and the little ants began to gather fruit in the forest. Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly and Rosita the rose beetle helped them too. They soon had a very big pile indeed. Stanley stuck ten candles on top of the fruit, just seconds before Bubble arrived with Harry Hedgehog. Happy birthday, Harry! They all shouted. Wow, look at all that delicious fruit. My favourite. Thank you very much, the hedgehog exclaimed. We've got a surprise for you, Dolly said, and they led Harry to the swing. Harry was very surprised. What a big swing. Can I use it? He asked cheerfully. Yes, we built it for you. Hooray! Now I can swing too! Thank you so much! Then they stood around the fruit pile and began to eat. They ate and ate until nearly all the fruit was gone. They stuck the leftover apples and pears on Harry's spikes and he took them home to his mossy house. Harry went to bed with a happy smile and looked forward to tomorrow when he'd swing with his friends again.